guys, it's Cam here. Welcome back to the build room. And if you've got a first gen Celica that you're thinking about getting a new set of shoes, you're going to want to pay attention because this week's episode's all about wheel and tire fitment on my 77 RA28 Celica. So stick around and check it out. All right, so these are the back wheels here. They are 17s and they are by a company called JNC. Um, these are 17 by nine, which is a massive wheel to try and fit on a first gen. Um, the fronts are 17 by eights. They're a little better, but they are still super tight on a first gen. RA28 has more room in the back than an RA23, so you can get away with a bit more. We're gonna pull these out now and have a quick look. And then I think uh, I'm gonna get some tires on because I think you really need the tires on uh, to really understand what the look is gonna be. So yeah, let's get these out. These came all the way from the US and to be honest, they were packed pretty well. They've shown up in a good state. That is what we're looking at. They're also a lot lighter than I thought they were gonna be. Um, they are a multi-fit, so they're 114.3 by four and I think 110 or 100 by four. Uh, obviously, we're only using one of those. They're a cast aluminium from what I can tell. They're not flow formed or anything like that. And I picked these because uh, I wanted white to offset the colors that are gonna be on the car. I wanted something you know fairly strong from a wheel perspective. I liked the amount of dish that they have. Basically, aesthetically, they look good and I'm gonna do my best to make them fit. It's highly likely that we're gonna run into trouble trying to fit these because everything is gonna be so tight. But the key contributing factors for getting these on the car are going to be the offset and also the tire size. So let's take these and get the tires fitted and then we will maybe mock them up on the car. Actually, before we head to the tire shop, uh, I couldn't help myself. I took one of the rims and threw it on the front and we've already run into something. So let's have a look. Back here, you can see clearance to strut is zero. And then if we look at the hub mounting face, we've got about a centimeter or so gap already, which means we're definitely gonna be running a spacer on these, which is no surprise, to be honest. Um, yeah, I wasn't expecting uh, a miracle here, but we're gonna have to add clearance on the strut to that. So we're probably looking at around, I don't know, 15 mil worth of spacer here. The 10 mil plus five for wiggle room, I guess. I'm also worried about fitting the center cap uh, over the dust caps on the hubs. So potentially a couple of problems there that might be fixable, uh, but let's get some tires on so that we know 100% for sure. All right, so we're back from the tire shop and we have got rubber. So these are the front wheels. They are a 215-45R17 um, and the tires are Dunlop Derezes. Now, the reason I went with the Dunlops is they were fairly cheap. And remember, these are cheap rims. I wasn't gonna put expensive tires on for a car that doesn't have a lot of power and doesn't need that much grip anyway. You gotta remember that tire technology has come leaps and bounds since the 70s. So even if you put a stock width uh, new tire, not that they make them, but a stock width tire with a grippy modern compound, it would be more than enough tire unless you're taking that thing out racing. So yeah, any modern tire on these cars, uh, unless you are expecting serious performance, will be fine. Um, so yeah, these were pretty cheap, but also uh, they have a reasonable tire pattern. Some of the tires are out nowadays, when you're looking at them from the front, they just look horrible. So at least this looked relatively purposeful, which is important when really, these wheels are all about looks. So yeah, front tires are a 215 and the rears, this is a 245 4017. It's on the nine inch rim, as I said before, this has more dish than the front eight inches. Uh, and if we turn it side on, you can just see exactly how much meat we're gonna get on the back of this thing. And yeah, if we take a look at these things up close, like I said, I really do like the tread pattern of the Derezes, uh, aggressive enough to look cool on a car like this. And one note that I did get from the guys that actually put the wheels on, I didn't throw these tires on myself, obviously, was that they were really, really easy to balance. Now that can be one of two things. When you're getting really cheap tires, quite often they're really hard to balance because they're just not evenly um, spread out in terms of their weight. Um, and also if you've got really cheap rims, quite often they're not balanced either and they need a lot of balance weights to get sorted out. But if we have a look here, that there is the only balance weight we needed 
on this nine inch 245 wheel. So once we know these will actually fit on the car, I'll go through the cost with you guys, just so that everybody knows. It actually cost me more to get these shipped to Australia than it did for the actual rims themselves. And while I wouldn't necessarily recommend these for your track car, I don't think they're a big deal going on a first gen Celica like this, especially one with a stock motor in it for now. So yeah, um, super happy with the rims and tires. Bit of investment to uh, make before I actually figure out whether I can get them on the car or not. But uh, I really do like this style. Uh, if I can't fit them on this project, I'll fit them on something else. So yeah, let's uh, get over onto this quarter now with a front wheel and we'll see how we go. All right, so here we go. We know this isn't gonna fit in terms of it's gonna foul on the strut. Now, when I test fit this without the tire, it was hitting just underneath this weld of the spring perch. So obviously it's gonna hit again, but I wanna understand whether it is also gonna foul on the spring perch itself, because that is far more problematic. But I didn't go any higher. The rim and the tire together is almost exactly the same height as the original wheels and tires that went on this. So theoretically, put these on and uh, the speedo would still be correct. So I'm hoping this tire will go under there. Let's see that. All right. All right, we are hard up against the strut again below, but I can sort of get my fingers in between the tire and the spring perch. So realistically, the only clearance we need to worry about is between the edge of the rim and the strut itself. I made sure not to go too crazy with the width on these fronts because I didn't want this tire to balloon out from the edge of the rim. So we have a little rim guard which is maybe a millimeter or two, but that shouldn't be too bad because we're gonna to have to give a little bit of room for the tire wall to flex anyway under cornering. So what we're gonna to need to do for these ones is to get a spacer. And what size spacer you ask, I don't know, but I have a solution. All right, so in terms of spacers, uh, four by 114.3 spacers, I have one set and they are a very big set that I was originally thinking I needed to put the uh, Enkis on this car. They were about, I think they're a hundred and something dollars. So when you think about it, to fit a set of spacers to a car is not that big of a deal. But if you don't know what size you need, I don't want to go ahead and buy four different sets of, you know, five, 10, 15, 20 mil spacers, uh, only to then turn around and throw out three of them and retain one. So for Christmas, I was given a 3D printer. So what have we got? 3D printed wheel spacers. Uh, I have a five and a 10 here. I can throw the two together to make a 15. I'm pretty sure that's all I'm gonna need, but I'm gonna figure out exactly what size I need. You can get in between sizes as well. You know, based on the whole Imperial thing, there's a half inch set, which would be 12 and a half mil in between this size. So this should enable me to dial in the fitment of the car and then I can order a proper set later. Don't worry, I'm not gonna be driving the car any long distances with these things on. Uh, yeah, they're definitely not safe, and some would argue that spacers aren't safe, but I think um, with a moderately sized spacer on a car like this in a non-performance setting, uh, there's no big deal. So yeah, let's try a couple of these spacers and see how we go. Oh, and one other thing on this um, multi-fit pattern, obviously I'm using the larger setup, 114.3, uh, and it's heavily countersunk into the rim here. So I can't get a normal wheel nut on that. This is a, the standard 12 by 1.5 nut that I used on the Enkis, and it won't even fit properly in that hole. That is not centered in that hole at all. It's not gonna go in. You'd probably be okay with it here, but no bueno there. So I've just got a set of these hex, internal hex uh, wheel nuts, and they fit fine. Um, also, I don't mind the black in there. It looks a little bit more racy. Uh, and, you know, without a tool running on the edge of this thing, we're hopefully not gonna scratch this paint out either. So yeah, on to fitment. Now, I'm gonna start with the five mil spacer. It's a bit tight, but whatever. Fits pretty good though for a uh, free 3D print model. All right. Now, if we're looking closely here, At the back, we're pretty much touching that strut again. Yeah, we've got a little bit of clearance there, but if we have a look in here, we're still not actually sitting flush on that spacer. It's not much, or well, maybe we are. Uh, actually, I think the mounting face is on there, 
but I think that's probably a little bit tighter than I want. Any sort of tire flex here and we're gonna be rubbing up on the inside of that strut. So we'll try the 10 mil now. Looks a bit media. I'm just going to put a single nut on that just so it doesn't move around on me. Actually, we'll give it a second so we know it's sitting flat on that face. Okay, apart from the fact that this has sat for a while, so there's a bit of rust on the brakes. That's actually not too bad. And if we look in behind, yeah, that tire's moving fine. And there's a little bit of room. I wouldn't say it's a huge amount. You could probably do with another five mil or so, but I also don't know how close it's gonna to come to this guard. And in fact, you know, it's sitting quite proud at the moment. So the likelihood of us having to do something with these is high. Um, we won't know until we get this thing on the ground. So what I might do is I'm gonna throw in a 10 mil on the other side and just bolt it up as it is. There's not much thread on these. You know, you cannot go for like a highway drive on this, but it should be good enough if I do it up tight to um, at least be able to turn the wheels when it's on the ground um, at low speed and uh, see if we're gonna rub on these straight away. Um, but yeah, to do that, I need to get the back wheels on and uh, hmm. I don't know if those are gonna fit. So uh, yeah, let's get to the back now. All right. Now for this one, the car is up on jack stand. So technically speaking, it's kind of got its weight on it. Uh, so yeah, we're probably gonna have to tuck these in on the side, um, but then we'll see how well they fit. Oh, ooh, <laughs> uh, okay. Well, I guess technically they're on. All right, so that is the big question. If we're looking at the rim face and the tire, are we going to be able to squeak it in under that fender? That is quite tight. So I can get my fingers in there at the moment, but as soon as the uh, springs compressed slightly more under load, um, I have a feeling that rim there is gonna be cutting into the tire. Um, in terms of the back, all right, and uh, yeah, if we look around here, if I can get you guys the right angle, you can just see the top of the spring perch there. And we've actually got probably a full inch, I would say on that one. So we're sticking out a bit further than we need to. Um, and then on the rest of it, yeah, it all looks good from a, you know, trailing arm perspective. Oh, and from the front, so yeah, similar situation. Plenty of room there all around. If we have a look, you can see that uh, in terms of ride height itself, I don't want it much lower than this. The top of the wheel is realistically probably about here at the moment. For the look that I'm going for this thing, you know, the wheel choice is more like, um, I don't know, high performance racing rather than uh, stance. Um, these are reminiscent of a sort of a Nismo LMGT1 type of wheel. That's probably what uh, attracted me to them. Um, so yeah, I don't want this to look like it's unusable. So, you know, maximum, um, I would want to see it maybe down there. That's probably, you know, as low as I would want to go. The thing that you need to think about though, is because these are a solid rear end and they've got the uh, two trailing arms and the pan hard rod, the diff doesn't always necessarily sit right in the middle of the car. As the diff moves up and down in the car, the pan hard rod, which is attached from one point on the chassis and then diagonally across to the diff, when the car lowers, it will actually push the diff over to the left-hand side uh, because uh, a bar that's like that has a certain length and then as it straightens out, it's pushing more over this way. So you do have to have a bit of space on these. It's not gonna be like set and forget. As you get more and more load, the wheel's gonna come more and more this way. So it'll be interesting to see what it's at now. I might throw the this tire on the other side uh, and we'll see whether we've got the same distance or thereabouts on that side. Um, if we do lower this anymore, what we might need to do is throw on an adjustable pan hard rod. Um, and I actually have one of those already um, expecting that this day would probably come. 
Uh, so it's not a big deal, um, but it is uh, another expense. I think it was about 350 bucks. So um, yeah, let's get a wheel on the other side and see if it fits just as nicely. I don't know about the rocking on that diff. That's a lot of backlash. Probably needs an LSD center anyway. But we have plenty of room. Uh, in terms of offset, it's probably actually a little bit closer on this side. So um, A, if I was to lower it, maybe it moves over a bit. Panhard rod's not required. Um, but I really do think I'm probably gonna have to cut this lip. Now, one other thing, you'll notice we have the uh, JNC center caps on here and they don't fit on the front. So before I get this thing on the ground, we need to have a look at that. All right, so this here is the dust cap. You pull that off and under there is the uh, large bolt that holds that hub face together onto the spindle and it sticks out quite far. So this is the standard center cap. It clips in just by a little interference fit on that clip at the back, but it is nowhere near deep enough to accommodate this. So I didn't know what to do with this. I don't really like the look of these anyway, and I didn't really want to advertise JNC so much. So then I thought, well, what can I do? Maybe I'll 3D print something for this. So it's been some time. I've spent some time developing this. As I said before, the wheel spacers, these were just downloaded from Thingiverse. You know, I downloaded this, all I had to do was change the thickness of it, uh, which you can do in the slicer, and uh, printed these out very easily. But not a lot of technical expertise on my part required for that, to be honest. This was gonna be a different story, so I had to figure out how to use Fusion 360 and 3D model my own stuff. So I started out with a really basic prototype. It was just this cone shape here, and the idea was, we wanted something that would just fit over the top. It needed to be a little bit bigger than that, but almost fits across the uh, dust cap. In addition to being a little bit small, uh, this one also was you know, really quite plain. This was just to get my sizing right off the outset. Plan was to have the finished product look a little bit more old school. So uh, I wanted to make this bigger. And then what I also tried to do on the 3D model was to flute the outside edges. And by fluting those, I've come up with something that I think is a little bit more retro. Uh, it's got a um, recessed surface here. Uh, it's got a normal uh, circular ring at the back, but fluted in between. And you can see the flutes on the front. So that actually fits over pretty much perfectly. It fits into that um, rebate here. Uh, again, still worried about trying to get something in there to secure this thing on. I don't want to be trying to sicker flex these on or anything. They're going to come off at a million miles an hour, but that fits in really quite well. Um, just from the side though, it felt a little big. So uh, I couldn't really reduce the diameter of it. So I thought I'll see how much I can take out of the height. So I came up with version three and that is version three. Same design, just a little bit shorter. I think that looks a lot more proportionate. Side by side comparison. That is how much height I managed to get out of it while still clearing the dust cap. Now these are just made out of PLA. Uh, it's cheap and quick to use. Um, the problems with this is it's not super strong and also they this will warp um, with any significant heat. So anywhere above sort of um, 80, 90 degrees, I think, and they start to loosen up. Uh, so yeah, I don't want these deforming. I also felt it was a little bit plain here. So that's when I really hit my stride in Fusion 360. And version four, I made out of a material called ASA, which is similar to ABS, call it ABS 2.0, so plenty strong. And also I put the TBR logo on the front. You can see that there. Now you can see the printing lines in that. These are all raw unfinished parts, but this is a lot stronger than that PLA one. Uh, it's good up to like 200 degrees or something like that. So being in the proximity of hot hubs and brakes, hopefully won't be an issue for this. Um, and I did start prototyping tabs. Now these tabs fit great when the wheel is off the car, but when we go to put it on, there's just not enough room between the wheel and this outer edge of the um, hub for it to fit. So to be honest, 
this is pretty much what I want to build. And I had to prototype this a bunch more times. Um, I haven't solved this yet to be upfront, but what I did do is a couple of things. So firstly, uh, for a finished part, it looks pretty good. Um, the printer that uh, the lovely Kelly got me for Christmas is really good. Uh, and I really prints easily. I didn't have too many problems with uh, wasted prints or um, uh, temperature issues and stuff like that. But I think on this one, those surface lines weren't that great. So uh, what I did was, rather than printing it flat on the bed like that, I turned it 45 degrees facing up, and that's when I ran into this. And that is a finished part. Again, I haven't touched this at all. This is straight out of the printer. And basically the lines that are in it, I actually quite like. It, to me, it looks like sort of a brushed stainless finish. So I'm really stoked with that. Uh, and then for these, for the tabs, I looked at making them thinner, um, which was a bit of a struggle. I made them so thin that they kind of broke. Also printing on the 45, some of the overhangs weren't good. So you can see this edge here, see how it's at a 45 degree angle, it's been ripped off uh, or it didn't print properly. So a lot of that. So then this is what, version five. So next, rather than printing out a cap each time, I just prototyped some stubs of these, same dimensions, just with the top cut off. And what I did was I started looking at things that were cut on a 45 like that. So 45 degree angle so that when you're printing it on a 45, it's actually a flat surface and you can get supports under it relatively easily. And that led us to this one, which is what I'm hoping is the finished product. Um, it is, you know, it exceeds all of my expectations for an unfinished straight off the printer part. Um, I love the TBR logo in it. I love the grain effect. And these uh, tabs here are really quite robust. They don't fit at the moment. Um, I can show you on the back wheels, one of them fitted, but yeah, uh, I'll do that in a second. But for now, it's very close to getting in. And I'm thinking what I can do is, on the hubs, we'll get rid of this wheel for a second. All right, so you can see, it's just a little tight on there right outside diameter for the wheel, and then this area is a little tight. But, in terms of strength required, the nut that's in here bolts up right at the back here. So this area here, there's really not much to it. So if we look at the dust cap, you can see around the edge of the dust cap, sort of right here, there's quite a decent sized lip here. So I don't think that this is structural at all, we may be able to just uh, sand down or machine. Um, I'd want to do it ideally with the hub rotating. So maybe just machine down, say, four or five mil in and a couple of mil down, just so that we can get that clearance on and that should fit. I'm not going to do it to these brakes though, because these are standard RA23 brake setup. These are actually the ones I built for Violet Crumbles and these are going to go back on Violet Crumbles. What is gonna go on here is a set of the RT132 Corona struts. Um, that This actually had those struts originally. I put these on to take it over the pits. Now there's a couple of things with those hubs. Firstly, I'm not exactly sure what size this is on those hubs. I'm pretty sure it'll be roughly the same because um, they're still the same stud pattern and they're same, still the same center bore on the hub. So I can't imagine it tapering much more. From what I understand, the hubs on the RT132 or is it XT130? One of those two, the Corona struts that everyone uses. I believe they're three to five mil further out so in terms of the clearance from the strut, if I put, let's say we've got a 10 mil on here and it just fits, to avoid rubbing, maybe I wanna to go to 12 and a half. I actually may not need to do that. I might be okay with a 10 mil spacer. And then once I get the other struts on and they stick out further, we'll gain that extra um, five mil. When I say they stick out further, it's the depth of the hub here, not anything to do with the strut. So the strut is still, the upright is still where it normally is. Um, and it's just the hub on this spindle. So yeah, for now, we're gonna run without the center caps, but I'm pretty sure when I go to rebuild the struts for the new car, I'll be able to get these on, and quite frankly, I'm absolutely stoked with these. 
Uh, these probably took, I would say, 10 to 15 hours at least for me to get these modeled up in Fusion 360, mainly because I had to do a whole bunch of tutorials and stuff like that to actually figure out how to model. Um, the modeling itself was okay once you got into the flow, uh, and then slicing it up to get it to print properly, uh, that was pretty easy too. They do take a long time to print out. I'll try and throw in a time lapse of printing one of these, uh, and then I'll give you the times. I think that might be interesting, but the fact that I can just reprint these if I damage one or lose one or something like that, and they look this good unfinished, and this is strong enough to hold up to the heat of the brakes and uh, sitting out in the Australian sun, it's UV stable. Um, I'm, yeah, absolutely wrapped. But for now, I think we can safely put these aside. Um, they do fit in the rear. I'll be fitting those, and for the final shots today, I'll probably just sort of magically hold these in place but uh yeah pretty sure they'll go on the struts in future uh, i think we've got the rear wheels on we've got the spacers set up on these i will throw my second spacer in on the other side and we'll get this thing on the ground and see how it actually looks with weight on it while i'm doing that this is the 3d printer flash forge guider 2s this is the model with a hot end um, and it's got a little lcd screen so you can plan out your stuff I'm using an external filament heater as well because I'm using such high temp stuff all the way up at the top. This is currently sitting at 10% relative humidity. And you can see it's an eSun filament, EASA. It's a one kilo spool. Inside, it's got a magnetic PEI bed and this is the hot extruder right there. And then it's set up for time-lapse now. So we're gonna hit build and pick what we want, which is to build additional pylons. Throw it into build mode there. It's gonna to have to heat the bed uh, and that's gonna take a little while. And then you'll see the bed rise and we roll into our time-lapse. So you can see it's mainly printing supports and it's coming into the base. Remember this is on a 45 degree angle. Bed size on this is actually really quite good. It's 250 by 280 by 300 mil high, I think. So, you know, one of the larger um, printers out there without going to the really big stuff. There's faster printers out there also, but to be honest, the more you speed it up, the more likely you are to have problems. So I'm kind of happy with the combination of stability and print quality that I've got. And then 10 hours and 38 minutes later, we open it up and this is what we have, finished product. Uh, to get it off the base, we're just going to lift this up and that will bend it off. Easy as. If we flip this over, you can see the raft that's uh, disposable there and all the supports, they come away too. Uh, but yeah, good quality. And then if we start breaking this off, uh, it crumbles away really easy with this type of support. Uh, there is obviously a fair bit of waste, but it's not that big of a deal considering the cost of materials. But yeah, looking good. So it's probably time to leave this now and head back into the garage. All right, so um, I just drove this into the top of the driveway, reversed it out, gave a little bit of a turn, brought it back in on an angle, and uh, the wheels didn't fall off, and it looks mint. Uh, I didn't record that. Well, I tried to, but then the camera messed up and I lost the recording, but it's at the top of the driveway. There's still some sun, so let's have a look at it now. How awesome does this thing look? <laughs> Man, I can't believe how good they came out. Now they're not finished yet, but if we have a look, heaps of dish on the back. Feels like there's a reasonable amount of space in there. And then at the front, now this guard is sitting a little proud. Let's push that in. But we've got hopefully enough space for that to clear. I really want to um, just put a bolt in these guards or maybe tape them on because those bolts are probably rusted at the bottom. But um, yeah, I want to tape that down and then see if we can get this thing turning. Wow. What are you doing? Anywho, back to the car. Uh, yeah. Oh man, that just looks so good. All right, it just needs, uh, it needs one more thing. Oh yeah. Man, these look killer. But uh, there's a couple of things I'm not quite happy with, so let's go back to the garage and talk through them.
Firstly, I think it could probably be lower at the front. Not really happy with that gap, but um, I'm really surprised. I've made sure the fenders are in the line that they're supposed to, and we are still tucked in the top of that fender. So that would be legal. When we drop it a bit more, I have a feeling I did give it pretty much full lock, but not going fast and not under load, and there was no rubbing at full lock. So that's pretty amazing, to be honest. What I'm going to do now is I just can't risk doing much on that plastic spacer. I did manage to get more turns on these nuts than I thought I was going to get. So yeah, I don't think we're finished for this one yet. Uh, I'm going to get those steel spacers. We'll get them on and then I'll take you guys for a ride along and we'll see uh, how this thing drives. All right, so we're back and I've got spacers. I could only get eight mil spacers though. There just weren't any 10 available around Perth at the moment. I think we'll be okay with these. We've probably got enough room. I'm gonna throw them on now. I'll set some cameras up on the car. We'll take it for a quick drive. And then I'm gonna come back and I'll run you guys through uh, all of the stats on these and uh, might take some measurements as well. Uh, just so that, you know, if you're looking at wheels that are similar to this, you should be able to do some calcs and figure out what's gonna be close for you. So yeah, uh, we'll get these on and go for a drive. Wah, wah, wah. All right, that does not fit. Uh, it just, by the thinnest margin, just touches the strut. I think you can actually see a little bit of it there. Um, so yeah, that is no good. Also, it's a really bad fitment on here because there's slots drilled for those studs. This moves around a lot, so that's no good. So in order to fix that, I've made that. So that is a much thinner spacer this time. It's only uh, three mil, so we're gonna get 11 mil total, so a mil more than we had before. It is solid ASA, so um, should be very, very uh, tough. And then it also has a locating rim on it, if you can see that. And that is so that this sits over that like that and is held in place. And then we can use the holes on this so that it locates relatively squarely. Not that I'm gonna be driving far on this, but um, I definitely need it to be a little bit safer than those uh, PLA ones were. That on, there we go. Feel a little bit more confident in that. It's not ideal, but I just cannot get anything bigger than eight mils uh, in a set of spacers and running two to bring it out to 16 mil. I'm not gonna have anywhere near enough thread for it to be even close to safe. All right, we need some fuel and uh, it's pretty cold, but it's gonna run enough to uh, see how the wheels clear. And so let's go. Pretty fumy in here because uh, there's a lot of holes in the back of the car, so uh, yeah, that's no fun. Steering feels a little bit heavier, but not overly so. All right, and we're not testing speed here, so we're just going to find a spot to do some. Uh, tight circles and check for rubbing. All right, here's a good spot. Do a U-turn here. All right, that's full lock. Might just be a slight bit of rubbing there. I don't know if that's wheel or mechanical. I actually think that's probably something else. Might try that one again. All right, it's pretty good. Let's take it back to the garage. Okay, so before we get into the wheel specs and the sizing, let's check the fitment now that the suspension's had a chance to settle. All right, so that's sitting pretty proud. Uh, that is in line with the edge of the guard. So I think once we lower this, um, we're definitely gonna need to roll this guard to get that under. That is 
pretty much as uh, flush with the outside of the guard as we could possibly get. In terms of gap on the top of the tire, we slide this in and get it flat. That's about, I'd say 15 mil. So ideally I'd probably like to take 10 to 15 out of that. Let's check the back. So on the back, I think we got a bit more clearance here, yep. All right, I mean, this is not that scientific, but basically the tire protector here, which is not the edge of the rim, there's probably another, I don't know, two, three mil back towards the edge of the rim. But that is pretty much in line with the back lip. So we could probably, at, at this height, we'd get away without rolling. And I think even on the front for daily driving, you'd probably get away with it. It's height. Again, unscientific, but sue me. That again is about 15 mil to the top of the guard. So again, I'm probably looking to take another 10, maybe the full 15 out. And based on the fact that we've got that 15 mil here and we could lower it down and still be within that guard, uh, I think potentially we could run that eight or 10 mil spacer in here and just make the car look a little bit wider. Uh, and it would make sense to, for me just to trim this just so that when that tire flexes under hard cornering, it's not going to foul on the inside of that guard. Um, it's relatively easy to trim. Uh, because it's double skinned, it's much harder to roll. Uh, and then if you roll it, you end up with a V of metal like that, which kind of just catches dirt and dust and uh, it'll rust out your lips fairly quickly if you don't do anything about it. Now that we've gone for that drive, obviously the suspension settled out and we've got the same gap front and rear or close to the same gap front and rear. But for reference, as I said, these are yellow uh, low king springs. They're not the super lows. I don't think you can get them in the king springs. Uh, they're just the lows, and I don't know what the stock reduction in there is. They probably say 20 mil off stock, but let's face it, all stock springs have sagged by now, so you never get that 20 mil. So yeah, um, let's get some shots, and then we'll uh, regroup in the garage. All right, so we're done. Uh, first things first, 3D printing. So yeah. Super happy with the way all of the 3D printing went, apart from the fact that I saved myself some time and some money by 3D printing spaces, which is pretty awesome, if a little bit dangerous. Uh, but the ability to print those parts has got me really super keen for uh, doing a lot more with the 3D printer, uh, making some other custom one-off parts for this thing and potentially even maybe copying some parts and doing some reproduction. So yeah, lots of opportunities to be explored there. I did actually have my first failure. After saying I've not had any failures whatsoever with this thing, uh, I did actually get my first, uh, but it wasn't really a crazy thing. I actually ran out of filament halfway through the spool, or actually the filament snapped uh, because I had the filament heater uh, moved out to where I could get shots of it and things like that. But what I hadn't realized is I'd pulled the, um, the filament run too tight around the corner. So the filament was getting jammed up, it couldn't move and eventually it snapped. So it actually just sort of ran out halfway. That is what we ended up with. It is completely chopped off at the top. You can see all of the uh, support material in the center there. But as far as failures go, uh, yeah, that one was my bad, not the printer's fault. So still can't really fault that thing. It's been awesome. And that was the main thing for me. I didn't want to get a 3D printer that I then had to go and learn, you know, what temperature the bed should be for this thing, What's, what temperature the nozzle should be, how thick you should uh, run your first layers, uh, how thick should the raft be, all of these different things. You basically just set what filament you're putting into that thing and it does all of that for you. Really awesome. You might make some minor tweaks depending on the models you're making, but I've found all of that to be very minor and not that much of a ramp up in terms of having to learn a new tool. So yeah, put that aside, super stoked. Super keen to do more in the 3D printing space, so stay tuned. Uh, now, before we get into the wheel specs and the pricing and things like that, let's have a look at some of the finished product because my God, this thing looks amazing as far as I'm concerned. You can see that yes, after the drive, it all did level out quite nicely. I dodged up a wheel cap on the uh, front driver's side and man, I cannot get over how those center caps look. I love these wheels from pretty much every angle. The rims look great straight on, and as you move to either side, you can really see the dish, and you also see how wide the tires are and things like that. The back end looks really fat right now, and it's only gonna look fatter as we lower this thing a little bit more. And look, overall, I just cannot wait to get some paint on this car and just see how it all comes back together.
All right, and onto the wheel specs. So just a quick recap. The front wheels are 17 by eight in a plus 30 fitment, and the rears are 17 by nine, plus 25 offset. As I said, the fronts are super tight. Eight inches is a big wheel for the front of these things. I wouldn't go any bigger than that if I were you. Obviously, we've got a 10 mil spacer on it. Probably would like a 15 if I was gonna be driving this thing hard. So I would suggest that you're looking for a plus 15 offset, and that would probably be chef's kiss right on target. Now they are gonna be super hard to find. In fact, I haven't managed to find any yet. Send me a link if you've got one. So if you are gonna run spaces, just be smart, make sure you get longer studs. Now on the rears, there is actually a bit of room, as I said, not only between the outer lip and the fender, but also inside. So there was a good, I would say half an inch to maybe even an inch worth of space between the spring and all of that componentry. Uh, now the wheel arches do curve in a little bit at the top. So under significant compression, you'd want to be careful there as well. But I reckon you could safely go for a nine and a half inch the rear uh, quite easily and possibly even a 10. Now, if you had a 10 inch rim at the rear, being that we want to take that uh, wheel lip out a little bit more uh, and use up some of that room at the back, I would say you probably want to stick with about a plus 25 fitment on a 10 inch rim. Look, don't quote me on that because you know I haven't tried them, so I can't be 100%, don't go out and order based on those specs. But yeah, I do think there is a little bit more there. If you've got bigger rims on the back of a stock RA28, or maybe you've just rolled the gars, I'm not talking about fender flares, put a comment below, tell us what you got, tell us how well they fit, Tell us how much they rub. Now, the next thing I did tell you that I would talk through is the cost. Now, like I said, these were uh, cheap wheels, cheap comparatively with all things considered. I bought them directly from the JNC website. And one of the things that I did manage to find was a unbelievable discount code. I think it took 38% off. Uh, it was a, a wholesaler one. You can probably Google it and find it if you want or, or put a comment below and I'll throw it into the chat for you. So all up for all four rims, uh, it was 806 US dollars. I got 494 US dollars off. So realistically, the wheels themselves, 1200 bucks Australian. Where I got slammed was shipping. Well, at least I thought I was getting slammed. So shipping on all four wheels, all the way from the US to Australia, which is normally expensive anyway, $830, so $24 more than the wheels themselves. So that brought the total package up to a little under two and a half grand. Dealing with JNC was also difficult. Uh, there was a bit of a language barrier and I'm not talking about an English to American language barrier. Uh, it was very difficult to get information and these did actually get caught up in customs probably because JNC uh, don't export them often and didn't give the right forms to the customs agents, so they got caught up. On the upside, for some reason, I didn't get charged GST on these. I got charged a $76 uh, handling fee, I think it was, but that was a lot less than 250 bucks worth of GST, so that was a win for me. Now I know then once you add in the cost of the tires, and you can do your own research on Australian Dunlop prices, but they're not a super cheap set of wheels. This is not like going onto one of the cheap online sites and buying a set of Hustlers or something like that. I do feel the quality is slightly better than the Hustlers. It's not out of this world, let's not go crazy, but it's a little bit better. And it's also something that I don't think I'm gonna see many other ones of in Australia. So yeah, this one's been a awesome one as far as I'm concerned. Uh, next week, we are gonna be doing some more rust on this. Uh, I am gonna cut off both seals. Uh, I'm just, after that last episode, I'm not comfortable with just leaving the other one sight unseen. Who knows what's under there? So as of the next episode, you'll get a chance to see what's under there at the same time I do. So yeah, that just leaves us with the standard spiel. If you are new to the channel, I'm gonna put the full Violet Crumble series up here and YouTube is gonna put some other cool stuff down here. Other than that, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time on The Build Room. Bye for now.